Hi, I'm Anthony, and in this video of Battery Experts with Anton Parr, we will discuss the flowability of electrode powders. In addition to properties such as morphology, particle size, surface chemistry, specific surface area and density, the flow properties of electrode powders are of great importance. Powder flow is influenced by various internal and external factors, and therefore requires experimental testing. Examples of external influencing factors are the various normal stresses occurring during storage, the temperature at which the raw materials are processed, and moisture, which is by far the biggest influencing factor for most powders. For electrode powders, parameters such as compressibility, cohesion, permeability, and angle of friction are important because they predict volume change, packing density, flowability, and storage behavior. All these parameters are measured with a powder rheometer equipped with either a powder shear cell or a powder flow cell. For battery materials, a shear cell is more commonly used. In a rheometer, install the mounting plate for powder analysis and connect the lower shaft, which also has a temperature sensor. From the toolkit of powder shear cell, select the desired cell size and the desired measuring geometry, which will be automatically recognized by the software. Once the cell and the measuring geometry are mounted, the instrument initializes by moving the upper motor to the topmost position. Then it will slowly lower to determine the zero gap or zero millimeter position. This is basically the instrument calibrating itself prior to the analysis. At this point, you are ready to fill out the cell with a powder sample and make sure it is uniform and evenly distributed with the use of a sample preparation bench. Place the cell and the overflow ring in the software, set up the method using a wizard when possible. In the Test Types tab, select Powder from the drop-down menu, then open the Shear Wizard to set up the analysis method. Here, enter the mass value because it will be needed to calculate the bulk density at each compression step. Additional settings can also be adjusted based on the characteristics of the powder investigated. A table with all set parameters is then generated. Now the analysis can start. Consolidated powders is sheared at a rotational speed of 0.005 RPM, and the analysis will stop after about 10 minutes. During shear of the electrode powder, the rheometer software records and displays any changes in both shear stress and gap at the applied normal stresses. This not only provides information about the failure behavior, but it also allows the investigation of dilatancy effects. The shear curves shown here resulted at a normal stress at pre-shear of 6 kPa marked with circles. The shear to failure points are generated within the range of 20 to 80% normal stress at pre-shear. These points are marked here with arrows. These three shear to failure points, which are automatically identified are then used to calculate the yield locus function, which is the straight line in this graph, and the more coulomb stress circles. These circles provide important information about the minimum normal stress required to make the powder flow at this defined state, which is sigma c in the graph, and about the total amount of stress present in the system, which is sigma 1 in the graph. At the end, for each consolidated stage, the software will plot the flow function coefficient in a diagram, which will classify the powder flow anywhere between non-flowing and free-flowing based on its position in this graph. So we saw how powder flowability varies greatly under different conditions. This is why it is important to investigate powder's flow with more than one value and at various stages of storage and processing during battery manufacturing.